Welcome everybody to another episode of the Word Made Flesh podcast, where we explore the life, the teachings, and legacy of Jesus Christ as told through the Bible. I'm your host, Fitz Criddle. Just want to say I'm so glad to have you join me on this podcast. If you're new here, welcome. If you've seen the previous episode, just want to say God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning back in. In today's episode, we'll unravel the multifaceted perceptions of Jesus Christ. So get ready to embark on a journey through time, faith, and cultural perspectives as we explore the question that fuels the world's curiosity. What do people today understand? about Jesus. And I'm absolutely thrilled to have you join me on this exploration of the various beliefs, values, and the impact of what some consider a mysterious figure whose influence continues to shape our world. We'll be journeying through the vibrant tapestry of beliefs, starting with how many see Jesus as a moral example or a philosopher who's teaching on love, compassion, and forgiveness transcend time and culture. Then we'll dive into the diverse interpretations that emerge from various religious traditions and secular perspectives, from Christianity to Islam, from Judaism to secular humanism. And you'll gain a panoramic view of the different lenses through which Jesus is seen. But that's not all. We'll also be taking an edifying dive into a pivotal biblical passage, Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 20, where the foundation of faith takes shape through Peter's unforgettable confession. Discover how this moment serves as a cornerstone for the Christian faith and echoes throughout history, reinforcing the significance of Jesus' identity as the Messiah, the Son of the living God. So, my friends, without further ado, let's embark on this thought-provoking journey together. Jesus as a Moral Teacher In today's world, many people perceive Jesus as a moral teacher and philosopher whose teachings hold timeless wisdom and guidance for living a virtuous life. Followers of this view see Jesus as a wise and compassionate teacher who offered a valuable moral and ethical teachings that can guide individuals toward leading virtuous lives. They may appreciate his emphasis on love, compassion, forgiveness, And the golden rule, treat others as you would like to be treated. People who see Jesus as a moral teacher say things like, Jesus came to show us the way. They seek the principles without the personal relationship or salvific role in Christianity. Some people believe that Jesus' teachings transcend religious boundaries and can be applied to all people of all faiths or even those who do not adhere to any particular religion. They may see his teachings as a universal moral framework that can contribute to a more just and harmonious world. This view of Jesus focuses on his teachings of love compassion, and forgiveness, which are seen as foundational for creating a more harmonious and just society. Those who emphasize Jesus as a moral teacher often focus on his interactions with marginalized and oppressed individuals in society. They may highlight his compassion for the poor, the sick, and the marginalized, advocating for social justice and helping those in need. People who view Jesus primarily as a moral teacher might reject or downplay some of the more supernatural or doctrinal aspects of traditional Christian theology. They might emphasize the importance of Jesus' teachings without subscribing to specific doctrines about his divinity, resurrection, or atonement. Some individuals with this perspective might use Jesus' moral teachings as a basis for interfaith dialogue and cooperation seeking common ground among various religions and philosophical traditions. By focusing on Jesus' moral teachings rather than his unique role as the savior within Christianity, individuals might be more inclined to reject claims of religious exclusivity, allowing for a more inclusive and pluralistic understanding of spirituality and morality. For example, have you seen one of those coexist bumper stickers that has symbols of all faiths 
Or have you heard the statement that there are many ways to God? To be clear, Jesus was indeed a moral teacher. That's because he possessed all the qualities of a moral teacher or leader. However, he is so much more than that. He is God, Lord and Savior who was sent by the Father to die for our sins. Jesus as a historical figure. People who view Jesus solely as a historical figure often approach him from a secular or academic perspective, focusing on the historical and cultural context of his life rather than emphasizing his religious significance. This perspective tends to treat Jesus as a subject of historical analysis and inquiry rather than a divine figure. Those who hold this view may believe and emphasize the following. Number one, historical context. This perspective emphasizes the historical context in which Jesus lived. Followers of this view seek to understand Jesus as a person who lived in a specific time and place, considering the social, political, and cultural factors that influenced his life and teachings. Number two, scholarly analysis. People who view Jesus as a historical figure often engage with scholarly research and historical methods to analyze the available evidence about his life and teachings. They might rely on the tools of historical criticism, textual analysis, and archaeology to piece together a more accurate understanding of the historical Jesus. Religious pluralism. Those who emphasize Jesus as a historical figure might seek to promote religious pluralism by highlighting the diverse interpretations of Jesus within different religious traditions and by de-emphasizing the exclusive claims made by specific faiths. So let me go deeper into religious pluralism. It is the idea that different religions and belief systems can coexist peacefully and respectfully in society. It suggests that no single religion has a monopoly on truth and that people should have the freedom to follow and practice their own faith without discrimination or conflict. In a religiously pluralistic society, individuals from various religious backgrounds can interact, learn from each other and collaborate while maintaining their distinct beliefs and traditions. It promotes tolerance, understanding, and acceptance of diversity in matters of faith. Number four, ethical insights. Some individuals focus on extracting ethical insights from the historical Jesus teachings and actions. They might view his words and actions as relevant to contemporary ethical discussions and principles without necessarily endorsing any religious doctrine. Number five, the mythology aspect. People with this perspective might be more interested in exploring how the figure of Jesus has become a mythology and how different religious traditions have shaped his image over time. Number six, religion and culture. This view can be particularly important for individuals who come from a cultural or intellectual background that values historical inquiry and skepticism. It allows them to engage with the figure of Jesus without committing to religious beliefs. Diverse interpretations and cultural perspectives. Their perception of Jesus varies significantly across different cultures and religious traditions, showcasing the rich diversity of human perspectives. This diversity of interpretation reflects the complexity of his character, teachings, and historical context, as well as the impact of cultural, religious, and regional influences. In Christianity, Jesus is the central figure and the foundation of faith. He is often viewed as the Son of God, the Savior, and the embodiment of divine love and sacrifice. The Christian understanding of Jesus is shaped by the New Testament scriptures, emphasizing his role in redemption and salvation. However, even within Christianity, there are variations in theological interpretations and practices, resulting in a spectrum of beliefs about his nature and significance. In Islam, Jesus, 
known as Issa, I-S-A, which means salvation of God, holds a revered status as a prophet. The Quran portrays him as a significant figure who performed miracles and delivered messages from God. Islamic tradition emphasizes Jesus' humility and its connection to monotheism. While Islam acknowledges Jesus' prophetic role, there are differences between Islamic and Christian perspectives on his divinity and role in salvation. In Judaism, Jesus is often seen as a historical figure from a different religious tradition. He is not a central figure in Jewish beliefs. And I want to say in traditional Orthodox Jewish beliefs. And his role is understood differently than in Christianity or Islam. Some Jewish scholars view him as a charismatic leader, while others regard him as a potential threat to Jewish traditions and practices during his time. And as a side note, we also have what is called Messianic Jews, right? These are Jews who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Cultural and regional factors play a significant role in shaping perceptions of Jesus. Different cultures may emphasize different aspects of his life and teachings that align with their own values and traditions. So they shape him based on their own traditions and values, creating a Jesus that they have imagined based on their own backgrounds. Regional influences, historical events, and the broader religious landscape also contribute to the diversity of interpretations. Jesus as a symbol of hope and salvation. For countless individuals, including myself, Jesus stands as a powerful symbol of hope and salvation, representing the promise of redemption and eternal life. This perception transcends religious boundaries, touching the hearts of believers and providing solace in times of struggle and uncertainty. The idea of Jesus as a savior embodies a profound sense of spiritual security and the aspiration for a better future. Central to this perception is the concept of Jesus' sacrificial death and resurrection. According to Christian belief, Jesus willingly suffered and died on the cross as an atoning sacrifice for humanity's sins. This act of selflessness is seen as an expression of God's love for humanity, providing a way for people to be reconciled with God and find forgiveness. John 3, 16 captures this sentiment, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The resurrection of Jesus is a cornerstone of Christian faith, symbolizing victory over death and the assurance of eternal life. The Apostle Paul's words in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 17, emphasizes the significance of this event. And if Christ had not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. The resurrection represents the hope that believers share in Christ's triumph, transcending the limitations of morality. The narrative of Jesus' account with Thomas in John chapter 20, verses 24 through 29 exemplifies the link between his resurrection and hope. Thomas, initially skeptical, experiences a profound transformation when he encounters the risen Jesus. Jesus' words to Thomas, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe, underscore the significance of faith in the unseen and the hope it brings. The belief in Jesus as the path to eternal life is a cornerstone of many Christian traditions. In John chapter 11, verse 25 through 26, Jesus himself declares, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. This promise of eternal life serves as a source of comfort and assurance for those grappling with the inevitability of mortality. The perception of Jesus as a symbol of hope and salvation 
resonates deeply within individuals seeking solace, purpose, and a sense of security in the face of life's challenges. His sacrificial death and triumphant resurrection offer the promise of forgiveness, reconciliation with God, and the hope of eternal life, embodying the profound faith that countless believers find in him. Matthew 16, 13 through 20, Peter's Confession. This is the part that I'm excited about talking about today, diving into the biblical passage of Matthew 16, 13 through 20, we encounter a pivotal moment in Jesus' ministry that carries profound significance for understanding his identity and the foundation of the Christian faith. This passage captures the essence of Peter's confession and its implications for the perception of Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of the living God. In Matthew 16, 13 through 20, Jesus and his disciples are in the region of Caesarea Philippi. At this time, it was an important Greco-Roman city with a primarily pagan Syrian and Greek population. Jesus initiates the conversation by asking his disciples, who do people say the son of man is? Or if you to King James, who do men say that I am? The disciples offer various responses, the diverse perceptions circling at the time. Then Jesus turns the question to them more personally. Now imagine you're there with the disciples and Jesus' eyes locks on you. And as the entire world around you fades away, Jesus asks you, who do you say that I am? Time seems to stand still. The weight of this question pressing down on your very soul, demanding a response that should shape eternity itself. In this breathless moment, the fate of your faith hangs in the balance. A choice that will echo through the ages. It is Peter who boldly steps forward and makes a declaration that would resonate through history. Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Peter's confession holds immense theological significance. By identifying Jesus as the Messiah, Peter acknowledges him as the long awaited deliverer, the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies and the hope of Israel. The title, son of the living God, underscores Jesus' divine nature and his unique relationship with God. This confession goes beyond merely recognizing Jesus as a moral teacher, historical figure, or prophet. It affirms his divine identity and purpose. Jesus' response to Peter's confession is equally profound. He blesses Peter, declaring that this revelation was not solely the result of human understanding, but a divine revelation. Jesus' words, and Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who was in heaven. This reinforces the idea that recognizing Jesus' true identity is a spiritual insight given by God. This passage also highlights the foundational role of Peter within the emerging Christian community. Jesus renames him Peter, which means rock, and declares, and I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This statement signifies Peter's leadership in the early church and the foundational role he would play in spreading the message of Jesus. The rock metaphor signifies stability and strength, suggesting that the church will be built upon the firm foundation of Peter's confession and Jesus' identity as the Messiah. Matthew 16, 13 through 20, captures a transformative moment where Peter's confession illuminates Jesus' identity as the Messiah and the divine Son of God. This confession serves as a cornerstone for Christian faith, emphasizing both the divine revelation that underpins understanding Jesus' true nature and the pivotal role of Peter in the formation of the early church. 
This passage stands as a touchstone for believers, reinforcing the profound impact of recognizing Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And so, dear listeners, as we conclude this enlightening journey through the multifaceted perceptions of Jesus Christ, we are reminded that the figure of Jesus is not confined to a singular understanding. He transcends time, culture, and religious boundaries, leaving an indelible mark on humanity's collective consciousness. In the midst of diverse interpretations, whether as a moral teacher, historical figure, symbol of hope, or divine messiah, there is an underlying truth that beckons us to explore further. As we delve into the rich tapestry of beliefs, let us remember that Jesus' life and teaching invite us to ponder questions that extend beyond the surface of mere understanding. They beckon us to examine the depths of our own hearts, to search for meaning, purpose, and the divine connection that resonates within our souls. In the midst of this exploration, let us not forget the invitation that Jesus extends to each of us personally. Who do you say that I am? This question echoes through the ages, inviting us to encounter Jesus, not just as a historical figure or a moral guide, but as the divine son of the living God who offers salvation, grace and eternal life to all who believe. As we wrap up this episode of the Word Made Flesh podcast, I want to offer a prayer. A prayer for all those who seek to know Jesus for who he truly is according to the scriptures. Heavenly Father, we come before you with open hearts and minds, seeking to know your Son, Jesus Christ, in all his fullness. We acknowledge that he is more than a historical figure more than a moral teacher, and more than our limited understanding can comprehend. We ask for the revelation that comes from you, the insight that opens our eyes to his divine nature and his significance in our lives. Help us, Lord, to see beyond the cultural and religious lenses that may cloud our perception. Grant us the wisdom to grasp the depths of his sacrificial love his redemptive power, and his role as a Messiah who offers us eternal life. As we contemplate Peter's confession, may we also declare with unwavering faith that Jesus is indeed the Christ, the Son of the living God. May our understanding of Jesus lead us to a deeper relationship with him, one that transforms our lives and guides our steps. May his teachings inspire us to love one another, to extend compassion, and to seek justice in a world that often hungers for his grace. And Lord, for those who are still seeking, still questioning, we pray that you would draw them closer to you, revealing your son's true identity in ways that resonate uniquely with their hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, thank you so much for joining me on this thought-provoking journey. Until next time, may the truth of Jesus' identity continue to inspire and guide us on our paths of faith. I have been your host, Fitz Criddle, of the Word Made Flesh podcast. God bless you. I look forward to continuing this conversation.